<clears throat> Am I still making the entrance? Oh, yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Crunch Chats here presented by Burdick Toyota. Thanks for joining us here. Uh We lose them? Oh, no, I can't hear him either. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if he can hear us. I'm not tech savvy. I don't know this stuff. Oh, there he is. We'll get him get that on camera. Oh. Sorry, I think I dropped out there for a moment, but what, we got the entrance. Hey, we got... Luke, that's okay, buddy. That's <laughs> you, right. you guys carry uh, the show. That's what you guys are here for. You're really carrying the show today. Uh, good stuff, as always. Ric Flair is in the building. <laughs> here he is. Give us a woo. Did you guys see it? Did anybody yeah. see it? Yeah, everyone saw it. I just, my one computer came uh, in and out, but we're all set. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, it's, Luke, it's a, I got uh, a Neither has been practicing here. for a week to uh, impress people, and you just ruined it. As soon as I heard no. I was doing this, I, was, I watched all the Ric Flair highlights from the 80s and 90s. I swear everyone saw it, though. That went off without a hitch. I just couldn't hear it in my uh, my headphones, but everyone else heard it. It all went perfectly smoothly. Well, how's everyone doing? Welcome uh, welcome back. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, hey, Lucas. Hey, there's everybody. There, I got a figured out voice. Hey. <laughs> it, that was... It, that was uh, that, that's why we got delayed a little bit. We had to get everything uh, squared away uh, technology-wise. No PC Labrie at the moment. We'll see if we can get him on at some point as well uh, here during this uh, this chat. But uh, we'll go around the room, see where everyone is at and uh, and how everyone's doing. We'll start with you. Uh, Mike Angelides, where are you at? How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm in uh, Toronto. Uh, I'm at uh, my ice company here and uh, just sitting in the office. Hopefully someone comes and buys some ice sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have to hop up at some point to make a sale, go right ahead. Uh, we don't want to. Uh, JP, uh, where, where are you at? Uh, I'm in Quebec City. I spent uh, all year in New York City, and uh, we just got out of there when uh, when everything went down. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, trying to make the best out of it, spending some time with uh, with my son, Philip, playing some sports and uh, taking care of my pregnant wife, Valerie. Beside that, uh, staying in touch with uh, with some of the boys and the prospects and uh, it's been uh, been tough but it is what it is yeah it's uh, it's oh, you were down like you said down in the new york city area which has been hit uh, really bad obviously as we all know so good thing you got out of there before that all uh, that went down uh eric nielsen where are you where are you how is everything going with you a little place i like to call heaven and devon luke it's on the uh, north side of fredericton new brunswick also known as god's country here in the uh, <laughs> the maritimes but I'm um, currently at my girlfriend's place right now, and uh, just we just actually got done a little uh, workout in the gym, and I'm excited for this opportunity and to be here and see all these beautiful faces on this <laughs> iPad screen right now. This is what this is yeah, what I'm, well, that's where I'm. At. Okay. I, I could tell you the the fans uh, when we put this out there the other day were pumped to see this group, and I know uh, it's. It's been a while, I guess, since all of you guys have been together. I know, I mean, JP, we've seen you in Syracuse uh, this year a lot. Mike, you were in town a bunch last year. Eric, you were here a couple of years ago. But uh, when's the last time you three were kind of together in something like this? Uh, go ahead. Probably the last time we played together, end of the year party. Yeah. Said bye to each other. Yeah, well, yeah. the hockey brings you back together. Like, I saw, I saw, must have seen Neither once or twice three times this year because he coached in the queue. And then, uh, I mean, the fact that we all stick together, like we stay in touch and everything, uh, Mike was playing in Italy and I got the chance to, uh, to go and, and see him uh, maybe two years ago. Was that the year? You yeah, retired? it came up. Yeah, yeah, it was about two years ago. And we ran up to Renown. Your team was playing yeah. there and I went up and he was there. It was awesome. Exactly. Beside that, we so went to you, uh, Rastodon's wedding and, uh, in Prague. Right. What's that? Neil? Yeah. I thought you know, that's when you played for the Macedonian national team. Was that when you, the ice hockey team, <laughs> team Macedonia? That's it. MLA, baby. MLA. <laughs> I thought he played for uh, Greece. No. Oh. Balzano, the Balzano Foxes. 
Rev still knows how to push his button. Don't you say no foxes. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me, when you talk about Greece. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And, uh, I, ju I, I, I just said that uh, Neeler, uh, we saw her in Prague. That's right. Yeah, we had uh, a wedding. Rackle Gudis' wedding. We got... Yeah, um, I was to come to that. Yeah, that was amazing. We did uh, the bachelor party in none other than Amsterdam. So that was no fun. And then uh, barely made it to the wedding in Prague. After that, it was uh, it was a long, it was a good two weeks, but it was a long two weeks. I'll tell you that for sure. How many how many beers did you drink on that trip? Over a thousand, well over a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> but who counting? We, we weren't counting at all. Oh, it was all Pilsner Urkel. So Goody got at this farm, right? Ran to the farm and we just ran out of uh, keg. Yeah, no we keg. ran them out. And then obviously Rad, uh, Rad, Radko's father, Leo, he's, uh, you know, he played pro a little bit. He had his secret stash of, uh, oh <laughs> my goodness. Oh, my God. Holy, there's the man. Always making an entrance. There that just he blows is. Right, that right out of the SD. water. <laughs> What's up, boy? The lumberjack. Where's, Where's your hammer? Your montos. Hey, how come I cannot see uh, Eric Nielsen? Uh, Eric Nielsen's pretty face. You can't see it. Ah, there he is. Yours. Ah, there he is. What's up? <laughs> you look hey, so I good. can't believe you're me in technology now, Neeler. <laughs> well, well, that's that's why we're late. It took me half an hour to figure out how to turn on the iPad. I had to get the. I didn't even know the passcode. <laughs> I know I need to have, but I tell the boys it's a long time. It's uh, I need to go back to the flip phone. It'd be better. Yeah. What about the phone you had, the waterproof one? Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. It was also smash proof too, eh? <laughs> drop, drop it off four stories in Norfolk, Virginia, from our balcony. <laughs> just test that method out. No, oh my God. Well, okay, lads, well, here. Go ahead and get, get, yeah. yeah. So PC Labrie is here. This is great. Uh, how you doing? Where where are you? What's uh, what's going on with you? Uh, just uh, working on the house right now in Quebec City, uh, uh, enjoying the, the 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 quarantine as much as I can. So try to to work on the house. That's all. How about you guys? He's always positive, eh? Enjoying the quarantine. That's just a positive <laughs> PC right there. That's the only one that said that out of all the whole group. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoying it well i mean this is great the four of you all together a big part of uh of the group that came to syracuse uh you know the first year of the lightning affiliation and uh, really set the tone set the tempo for what has been a, a great partnership over the years w what do you guys remember from uh you know the the first uh, years uh joining uh, the crunch becoming becoming the syracuse crunch uh, those uh, first years in the 2012-13 season and beyond who wants to take that one where does think JP, JP's gonna that stuff? I think I think we should start in Norfolk because let's go the year before yeah. winning yeah, yeah. winning the Calder Cup, right? In Virginia Beach, where we were wearing shorts and t-shirts and longboarding and uh you know the, the boys can talk to you more about that, but and then all of a sudden we find out we're going to Syracuse, New York. So that was kind of a a 180 for, for the group, I think. But uh yeah, it was It, 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 when we first got there, I remember us having to re-identify who the crunch were. And it just seemed like there was a kind of a, a negative with the crunch and in the community. So right away with this group that you're looking at right now, that we weren't going to have that, especially the man with the big beard right there. And it was our, it was our mission to get out in the community right away and reach out to the restaurant owners and bar owners. And for the first month, you know, re, re identify, is that the right word? Am I using the right word there? Like just let them know that, okay, we're the, we're the new team and we're the new guys coming in town and this is the way we're going to run things. And this is how we are and not how they were in the past. So I think it was, it was really, really good for both the organization and for the team. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think uh, we definitely build this, Team spirit in Norfolk, winning the Calder Cup and everything, going to uh, going to Syracuse. It was, and I even remember. I think like uh, a, a specific time, the year we played in Norfolk, spending like one day in Syracuse. I think at some like that. that that's the thing with this team. Like once 
once one go, we, like we always hang out together and we ended up uh, uh, having a little, uh, little drink in the afternoon, but that really solidified this group. We ended up uh, going on a run and the next year was just the same thing. Everybody that came into the, onto the boat just, uh, just stepped in and, and, and were just part of it. And uh, like I said, Neeler and uh, Barb and Lab and all these guys had the, this one house where they would, uh, you know, have everybody for either parties, either like watching a games or anything like that. So that, that went a long way uh, with, with this group. And uh, if you remember, we were, I don't know, like we were like first two thirds of the season, we we're just like on a 800 person winning percentage or something like that. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think the fans saw how much. Loud, loud. One, one, three, seven, two, three. Oh yeah, we, when you, when you say we all go, uh, one go, we all go. That's why uh, we got you out of uh, St. John one day. We could have easily just forgot you there. We could have left you, Neeler. Remember, <laughs> Talib could have left you. Stepping up as the rookie from... I, I from said the, in the group... Hey, guys, we're missing a guy here. We can't leave. And that was that was epic, to be honest. Like, having a young kid stepping up just for you, Neeler. Like, I was ready to go. Yeah. I was leaving. Was it Johnny? <laughs> it was Johnny, wasn't it? Yeah, Johnny... Johnny Peaches, he had to help me uh, shin pad tape my suitcase together because it wasn't cause it, <laughs> going going through the going through the lobby at the Delta downtown St. John's and boxers <laughs> falling out and stuff. My clothes are falling out and there comes Tyler Johnson shin pad tape so, and hey, Neither, trainer at the time. Neither tell us what you did the next trip in uh, St. John to make sure you didn't uh, you didn't miss the bus with your luggage. Or miss yeah, the plane. I brought my, I brought my toothbrush. I packed my toothbrush, and that was it. <laughs> In fact, I, didn't, I didn't even bring a suitcase. The boys are like, "You're not bringing a suitcase, Neely?" I said, "No, not this trip, boys." Not last <laughs> oh my god! And my toothbrush right on the inside of my uh, uh, suit pocket. And that was it. That's all you need it's when amazing. you go to St. John's, boys. That's all you need. Nice right. A healthy mouth. Fresh and, and uh, <laughs> flavory. <laughs> oh. Mike, what, what's what your take on uh, you know the the switch from Norfolk to Syracuse and setting the uh, the tempo and the tone here uh, for uh, what was your four years here and whatnot, and then moving forward? Well, I think we came with a winning attitude uh, and changing a culture. Uh, especially in the community. I think we were out and about being involved, uh, inter going out in the fans. You know, you guys do the Christmas party. We were always out, in your, like, you know, getting the fans involved. And I think they saw that we cared about the community and that we were a winning team, that this was a team. It wasn't just a bunch of guys that came, put their sticks on the ice and took a paycheck. We actually, we cared. We were buddies, and you can see the bonds that guys have with each other. And I think that set the tone and the culture for the organization going forward. And we went, you know, should have won, but we didn't. And uh, I think that set the tone, what the expectations was for the organization. And uh, you see that now, so, you know, that's why there's a guy like JP Cote is involved with the young guys, taking care, showing them what it takes to win and uh, teaching them uh, what culture means. I think if you don't have a good culture, you ain't going to win. And guys like JP are the best for that. Yeah, for sure. And and uh, I, I don't think it came to a surprise to anyone that JP Cote is in the role that he's in right now in terms of the player development. Everything we've heard from, uh, you know, folks back then was he was a great person on the ice, off the ice and has that mentality. I mean, I, I, I know he's right here sitting right next to all of us, but I, what, how great. would you say? Hey, look at that hair. He's got one right now, too. <laughs> looks good, man. But But it seems like a perfect role for him, right? <laughs> Uh, he's the best. And I think Jim and the organization was great at the transition. You know, Jimmy was, Jim was awesome for us, you know, missed that guy. And I remember you guys put that London, I don't know, telephone call thing. That was, that was priceless. <laughs> that guy flew up to the sky, but no, just the whole organization was good to us. They treated us well. And uh, so it was a cool transition, great transition. I think it was great that we brought a lot of the guys back, especially guys like PC, Cote, myself, Neeler. We all, all the veteran guys came back. So it was huge, you know. Love to get back together in Syracuse one night, just all the boys again, but see what happens. We'll have to get Jimmy on that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Angie, you said it, we didn't have any uh, hidden agenda. And that's why I'm trying to preach to, you know, talking to younger guys. Um, 
everybody kind of benefited from being in a winning environment. I give it like we won the cup, went to the final, like look at all the good players that played with us, you know, like from whatever, like Kucherov, Vasilyevsky, those are the youngest guys, but Palat, uh, Johnny, Killarn, all these guys. And I mean, it, and even like veterans, like, you know, I played for another five years after, you know, playing with you guys. Uh, Angie got to win the championship in Italy. Uh, you know, neither, you know, who know who knew he had another three years in his body. And that's yeah. Like, he was <laughs> player coach. Who knew he could think, be player like, coach? Player coach. You should have seen who knew? Reggie Dunlop year. was in. Uh, I was benching myself. Think... I was too I was too much ice in the third period. I have to bench myself. <laughs> I was like the I was like, no, you, you guys go, you guys go. I give you my breath. Too much ice time. <laughs> you deserve Yo, Reggie. it. I was, I I, like, say if I get a fight, then I was running the peak. I'd be in the penalty box, open the penalty box. I have to yell out, hey, all right, I want the, I, Johnny, you go. And uh, I want uh, Benny, you go. And yelling from the penalty box, so I want it on the, on the PK. <laughs> oh, what a year. What a year. I wish I was on that team. <laughs> oh, buddy, we had fun. Manchester Storm, what a year. Yeah, and uh, PC is still flying around in Germany, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Lighting it up. Lighting it up over there. Hi, it was great. Uh, honestly, I, I decided to follow the path uh, as my buddy Nieder, as usual. He always showed me the, the way, and and I end up in Wichita the year before as a player coach, and really enjoy seeing both sides of the, of the, the scene, and... Uh, I just I, I just found more fuel in the tank. It was a little bit left over in the reserve, so I just flew in Europe and follow uh, GP as uh, Pat and uh, DEL and and you can tell us about it, uh, GP. It's a uh, it's a it's a pretty good league down there. Like I didn't realize, I didn't expect the the caliber to be that high. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, and it looks a little bit like the uh, age soccer. There's so many import guys. And it's a little more grittier, so that's I mean that's what I like about about this league. Besides, you know, you know it's a little different than the, in the Swiss league or the KHL. But um, no, it, I'm glad you're there. And it's a whole like how how great of a city is Berlin? Oh wow, yeah, it's like uh, it's exactly how you described it to me before I went. You you were just saying like how it's like a, a metropole, like it's just. Uh, it's like almost like a Montreal type of city, just with more character and just all the graffiti. At first, you're kind of shocked and you feel a little bit uh, out of out of place, but then you realize that all those graffitis uh, they keep them in the city just to to add up some character and that like the roles over there are just like pretty much like free spirit, don't disturb and you won't get in trouble. Like it would be a perfect fit for Eric Nelson. I'll tell you that. The coach, it, it, yeah, it was <clears throat> Manchester, England, with the English mandatory yeah. two beers after every game, win or lose, in Jack's Lounge. Every game, so let's just to say I fit in right away. Your yeah. rule, or what's that? <laughs> Is that your rule, or like it, no, you... that was that was a pre existing rule. That was mine. I, I tried to change it to four, but they wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't go for it. <laughs> That was a new contract. Yeah, yeah. If I would have resigned, that's what I would have done. Uh, I gotta give credit. Well, huh? I was gonna no, say you, gonna you gonna talk about Ben Nielsen on the way, but if we go back to Syracuse, New York, I remember saying that we had between PC Labrie and Eric Nielsen. It was PC was the man that created the men, and the, he has that signed on a hockey stick to this day. It's in my uh, my parents' basement, so I don't want to forget that one. Really, he says that we were leading, but uh, we all kind of led each other and fed off each other. And I know that it's not one person. It was everybody on this on this screen right here. They were all part of something pretty special. <clears throat> and, and I think it was uh, last summer, uh, the Killers came out, maybe two summer ago, they came out with the, their new song, uh, uh, I'm the Man. And it always made me think of you every time I heard it. I don't know <laughs> if you heard it. Oh, yeah. I know exactly what song. <laughs> Every time I hear that song, I, I think about you like doing that uh, Ric Flair walk. <laughs> well, you missed this lab. You did it. You did it? Yeah, he came out. Out. I did it. That's yeah. me and technology, Trust. man. I couldn't get, I, I'm not even using my, um, my uh, phone right now. It's like my, 
my co-worker's phone because I couldn't get it going on my phone. What about, yeah. you, what about when you were Ray Lewis? No, you know who was, you remember who was Ray Lewis was uh was uh Jacques. Jaco. Jaco. Oh Jaco was Ray Lewis. That was a good one when you guys did that. Well you should you should give a background why you know we had all these uh skip figured out for playoffs, right? Well, at the time people didn't know this, but I was the highest paid healthy scratch in the whole American hockey league. So I had to I had to contribute somehow to the, to these uh to, to the team right i'm always, always trying to think of ways how can i contribute if i'm not playing if i'm not fighting like, i gotta contribute somehow but it, it didn't did it go back to norfolk was it did it start in norfolk it might have but you, you really we really took it another level we took it to another level yeah run. when we did our run the first year we were there we uh every round we would try to come up with an idea the guys that weren't playing we had our black aces and, and, and some guys and we would say, okay, well, we're going to do the starting lineup. So we go back up. Anybody that played with me knew that uh, my thing was a starting lineup. I get the boys fired up. That was, you know, I impersonate Ric Flair or kind of make my own spin off of WWE or WWF wrestler and just get, you know, crazy stuff. Like one time I was naked in a stick bag and I jumped out and I did the starting lineup, right? Like anything like that, try to get, try to get the boys fired up. Yeah. I remember in Long Beach, California, I was playing. And I brought in my guitar, and we did a we sang the starting lineup on my guitar. I was in the Easy Come Hard to Leave days, boys. That, that was, that was, those are fun I've days. In there, buddy. Easy Come. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. we all been there. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. All, all started there. Oh, yeah. Started so from uh, the bottom. Now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the finals, wasn't it, Ribs? I think it was the finals. Oh, I must have been, yeah, because it was Grand Rapid for sure. There's those two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we yeah, had yeah, Jock, yeah. Jocko, um, Grant Kyle Johnson, Kyle Johnson, Johnson. The guy. Hutch. He was Ray Lewis, so he dressed up as Ray Lewis, and we had our and we had our uh, black aces um, dress up in these like kind of like bikini as bikini coconut bikinis, and they had like the hula hoop dresses, and they walked in and they had the big signs up. Our motto for that year, right? There was they're holding up our. Uh, our playoff motto, our slogans, and they were walking around. And then you had Jocko come in dressed as Ray Lewis. Like, you know, his ritual before the game, he came in and we had the face paint on and the Lewis jersey and dressed like, like that, that jersey was something like $150. Like, you weren't afraid. <laughs> to money. Oh, yeah. No, it was, there was no cost. Like, there, we, we went all out, right? I remember when I did Ric Flair, I went and bought probably two or $300 at the sex shop, right? With the tight boxers and the boa, and, you know, and I had the, the wrestling high knee boots and, we get going with the blonde wigs, and it was uh, it was something. We had, we had a good time. <laughs> Got the boys fired up, anyway. Oh yeah, we won the always good. That's phenomenal. Well, you got to do whatever you, you have to do, right, to to make your impact, and you certainly made impacts here uh, with, with everything uh, that you guys have been doing. Uh, so I reached out to Dan Duva yesterday um, to, to get some news. Dan Duva. <laughs> That's right. To get some Double stories or, uh, or, you know, topics to, to mention or whatnot. And he said um, uh, there was a couple of games that came to mind for him. And so I wanted to get your takes on, on some of the moments throughout the course, at least of that first season. And the first one he mentioned was very early in the year. It was down in Binghamton. And it was the game where uh, Riku Hellenius and uh, Robin Leonard get into that fight. You guys come back from 5 nothing down. <laughs> wonder what you guys remember from that uh if anything and and what that might have done for the group uh you know early in the season there well that started in the morning skates right because that that's that's when ticker got his car uh you got robbed yeah, 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 yeah. Right. that's right <laughs> what a day yeah so well you, you guys want to jump in and Explain what happened. I think you got this, coach. You got this. Yeah, so you got, got this one. All right. Well, remember. So yeah. So so Dustin Jakarski uh, goes home after morning skates, and got someone in his parking lot chasing him with a knife. So he yeah. leaves his car there, gets out of the parking lot. The guy just starts. You know, there's a there's a pursuit in Syracuse. The cops catch him. But anyway, you sure. can't can't yes, play that okay. game. Because, yes. So Thick Thicker can't play tonight. So Riku Elenius jumps in. Um, and even I think Coop stays behind and he drives like uh, 200 miles an hour to come to get to the game in time with Ticker. 
Um, we start the game, everything's kind of like, everybody's excited, the story, whatever. So we go, uh, yeah, so we ended up, you know, getting behind uh, behind by five. Is that Was that five nothing, really? Five, yep, five, five nothing. <clears throat> and then that's when things got interested. Maybe, Nita, you can jump in. And... Well, I was healthy scratch that game, so I, 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 I remember watching the whole thing very well. Oh. So I think, I can't remember who the first fight was, but I don't know, like Coop. Maybe we lost them. One of the uh -oh. best ever gave me. I don't know, Angie, does that make sense to you? No, we lost you there. Yeah, no, you cut out for a second. Oh. I know somehow, there wasn't there a brawl? I can't remember, man. My head's. Oh, I remember. You guys, can I, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're good. You're good. So, so it ended up, we had a fight. I think uh, Jerry Nightingale fought before the, before the end of the second. And Koo came in the room swinging with like an unreal speech. And Riku and Lanius fought Leonard. And then it just went down. Like we, we kept, you know, there was five fights, I believe, this game. And we ended up like, or before the second, anyway. And we ended up like starting to score more goals. And uh, we tied 5-5 five, five before the end of the game. And uh, JT Wyman scored the OT winner. I believe. Well, that was wild. Is there a the, only thing I remember, the only thing I remember from that game, to be honest, is it was my favorite game, but I don't remember anything. Me too. I can't remember <laughs> anything either, man. I I knew it. It find it on YouTube. It's unreal. It's who all fought? that. I don't even remember who fought. Who fought? Do you remember 90? Yeah, 90 no, fought. No, I don't remember. Uh, Borowski or Borowski? Borowicki. Um, Angie, you fought for sure. Remember that guy in Binghamton that used to always give us the finger in warm up? He used to always give us the finger right behind our bench. Remember that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know where that guy is, man. I want to find that. Guy. That guy pissed me off every game, man. Every game. Yeah. Hey, I feel like back then fighting was just like like any other thing you do during the day, like having breakfast. Yeah. All the time. I think somebody punched me from their bench. I remember that. I was in their bench. <laughs> And someone suckered me right on the nose. And then I think Lab, well, that might have been a different time. Then Neeler jumped in the bench. That was another time we played Bingham. Oh, exactly. Yeah. You remember that? I do remember that. Yeah. I, I remember that time. I remember and being the suckered in the bench. And then you jumped in the bench with me. Yeah. We got kicked out of that one. I remember when there was one time that uh, Borwicki, again, he was going after Lee. Remember Brian? Brian Lee or D-Man? Yeah. I remember Brian Lee. Like I told him, I said, it's not, you know, he did it the one time. I said, I, well, I can't say it here what I told him, but you guys get the point what I said. <laughs> and uh, he did it again. And then that was it. That's when I lost it. I saw, saw Black and made sure that he wasn't going to do it again for the rest of the game. And he didn't. He went, After you, went to, you went to Neeler's world. Uh, I was, my other one was, I remember Labs challenging two guys. I remember him going like this. Time, I forget where that, that was Hershey. And he was like, come on, come on, both of you. I remember brawl. that. I can't remember that fight. I remember that being a brawl or something like that. I can't remember that either. Was that in Syracuse? That? I think that was in Syracuse. I remember Where that. Where was that, Labs? I have no idea. Like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's, it's tough like, to remember if you go back and because you, you're such in the moment at the time. And when you do play a hockey game, like your emotions, I think, and you're so zoned in that you, you don't remember. I don't remember oh. a lot fights and situations and obviously in Toronto winning the championship with Norfolk I mean I remember that but like games and people ask me about oh this fight or that fight or do you remember this or that and it's like no just because I think as hockey players you live in the moment that right there especially during a game that's all you're focused yeah. on I think that's why you can't really recall a lot of stuff off the ice before uh, 12 o'clock before midnight yeah we can remember quite a bit of stuff but then after after midnight starts to get a little <laughs> foggy again <too. laughs> Well, I pulled up the box score from that game just to to take a look. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Jared Nightingale had a couple of fights in there. Uh, UPC, you had a fight. Mike, you had a fight. Who? I don't remember. Who? Uh, uh, was it so, um, Eric Greiber fought someone. I don't know who fought who here. It looks like uh, Labs, yeah, that's who you fought. fought. Yeah, yeah. No, that was, uh, it looks like you and, uh, and Greiber. Let's see. Uh, you might have gotten uh, David Jerzinski, oh, yeah. Mike. 
Yeah, I, I, think, probably that, had that I think that was who you had. Uh, then you had the goalie fight there. Let's see, Robin Leonard here. They just keep going on and on. <laughs> uh, uh, JP, you had a fight in there too. Um, yeah, Borvievsky, it looks like. Yeah, so, look yeah. but too. Wild. Like, what you're saying is we're a bunch of meat sticks. <laughs> <laughs> so all four of you were involved. Talk to you guys. <laughs> but for our defense on that, like, how long was the ride to go to Binghamton? An hour and a half, maybe? Yeah, yeah it's an know. hour and change. Not much. An hour and a half. Yeah, but stuff to nap in the bus before a game. So it takes a period and a half to wake up. So, like... That's that's for my defense. I'm just like, well, we're down five nothing, and we come back. That's because like, it took the legs. Like, it took a little bit for the legs to get going, and then we were a team that was like clutched in the end of the second, and the, the third was our period. That was a great strategy. Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and oh, yeah, the ticker almost die, and then come back, and then oh yeah, the in front of us, like, oh, oh, what fuck. a day. Hey, a fight I remember is you, uh, Lab, and uh, Nieder in the warm up where we had that brawl uh, against, was it Springfield? Yeah. Springfield. Yeah. Was that in Syracuse or was that in Norfolk? That might have been in Norfolk. Oh, been in Norfolk. Norfolk. Was in Norfolk. Yeah, who speared you? Someone speared you along the red line. Yeah. Well, who was it? Uh, Mayor? Mayor. Yeah. 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 I think you just got yeah, sent down. That was it. And then Labs was right in behind me right away. I don't know. We must have. I don't know. But you guys, up yeah. like maybe four or something, but we were, it was a chip on our shoulder. Do you remember uh, um, Pick, Alexander Picard? Yeah. Trying to, he jumped over, I think, one guy or two guys. Like he just dove into the pal. Like, Superman. Yeah, he's Superman. <laughs> like, oh. We would need the girl to do like a, <laughs> a highlight brawl of those two years that. That followed the cup and all that. That'd be a pretty good video to watch. So, yeah. Like this, this, this one year, the year after, and the year after, we had like 90, over 99 fights a year, like close to 100. And we, we used won. to have it. Every guy had to fight. Remember that? That was a great rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great rule. The game has Every changed big time. Every guy had to fight Yeah, I can't push that anymore. <laughs> you can't have that rule anymore. No. You don't have to fight every night. You just got to be willing. I, I think I say that still today before games. I feel like it's the oh, yeah. motto. For sure. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to, we're seeing if we got any questions here on our Facebook side. Someone wants to know, uh, Eric Nielsen, if you still have the gingerbread man costume. I remember seeing that at one of the uh, crunch holiday parties. I'm sure it made its appearances elsewhere as well. But uh, people want to know if you still have the costume. Yeah, we should touch on that because with this group here, we we actually we had a lot of fun. We won on the ice, but we had a lot of fun off the ice. And every year we do a, a Christmas party, right? So we all get together and our good friend Saltine Warrior there, Johnny Boy would have us. Is Saltine Warrior still going on? Is it still? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was kind of our spot for Halloween and, and Christmas parties. I guess we did the, the bull and bear one year too. Yeah, yeah we did that. Bull and, bear. and then Al's Al's was very accommodating for us too, obviously. But uh Anyway, yeah, the, the, it is. It's still every Christmas I bring it out and I try to pie somebody in the face. I try to get, try to keep that tradition around. So I haven't, uh, haven't gotten beat up. Gingerbread man hasn't gotten beaten up yet. So <laughs> people still find it pretty, fu pretty funny. Yeah. I dressed up as Rick Nielsen one year. I, I think this was my best costume ever. Oh, wh what I didn't make the NHL. That? I do got to say this. I never made, I played five exhibition games in the national hockey league i never made the nhl but i got a syracuse crunch bobblehead and i had jp cote dress up as me for halloween so in my mind i made it i made it that's it i still I have your bobblehead I, I did it all i said that's it <laughs> i was roommates with pc Labrie, mark Mario, <clears throat> racco gudas rico Melanius. i half the half the team at one point would have stayed or slept over at our place and that was it i was that had to be some some uh some house you had there 137 Chords Crew. It was in Camillus. That was our first one. Yeah. The yeah. second one where? It was in uh, the ACC. That was in Cicero. Yeah. The crunch. We, we had a crunch party. Like, uh, you remember? Orange like, Crush. Or the Orange, orange crush. crush. Yeah, Orange Crush. The Orange. Because yeah, the Syracuse Orange, right? So we 
we had an orange themed party. So everybody had to dress up in orange and we had orange crushes. Me and PC the night before, we bought 150 bags of oranges at <laughs> Sam's Club and we were up all night fresh squeezing and pressing this orange juice, having beers in the garage, getting ready for this party, right? So I don't know. Zetsy, Zetsy was pretty mad with us, I think, the next day because we were a little tired of practice after that. Night. <laughs> we had all fresh squeezed orange juice, that's for sure. Oh, we were healthy. Vitamin C was true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was good. It's around this time of the year, too. Yeah, right. We got another question on Facebook. Uh, pretty, pretty broad, but we'll go this route. Um, what do you remember best memory or something from your time here in Syracuse uh, over the years? I don't know who wants to start. We'll just go around for all of you and maybe give you a second to think about things. But uh, um, yeah, do you favorite. What do you remember about Syracuse? What did you like about Syracuse? Anything along those lines? Man, there's a lot. There, That's I mean, why, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a, there is honest in this group. Especially. Yeah, there is a Yeah, just the group and uh, honestly, the atmosphere uh, in the memorial, like it's something that uh, it's very special. It's unique in his, uh, in his way of just like feeling a, kind of a, an energy always like uh, – it's almost like fighting is just a tradition in that building. That's what I remember the most. It was just, there was a smell of just like being aggressive and felt like it was smaller. I don't even know if it was smaller, but it felt like it. It just felt like the fans enjoy more like uh, phys a good physicality than, than just like a, a good, good plays. They were just like embracing the, the way that we're, we were a team really tight and, uh, never backing down in front of anybody. And it was just, uh, it was so easy to just be becoming like a, a family in front of uh, that crowd to me. And, and it was on and off the ice. We, we get to the house uh, in Quartz Crew and it was, again, like we would invite everybody to come over at any time. And that, that, that was the best of uh, Syracuse for me. It was a, a small, small community that like, uh, we, we were super tight. That's, that's what I remember. Oh, for sure. Well, for me, it's easy. My, I mean, beside the camaraderie for sh and everything, uh, my son is born as uh, at Kraus Hospital. So, for me, it's all. It's like it'll be forever. You know, remembered my in my in my family's heart for sure. Same with me too. I had Alex there, and the whole community treated us so well. Especially like having kids there, and then you know, getting the War Memorial rocking in the playoffs was awesome. You know, that old school feeling, like Labs was saying. You know, you wanted to go through a wall for the boys and for the city. You know, you get that killer instinct in there. You felt like you were in slap shot. You know what I mean? Like that, you know, eye of the tiger, get fired up kind of stuff. And we felt off, fed off that. And I miss that. I miss that, that energy. No. St. Tyree's Day on Tippery Hill. Oh, that was a good <laughs> That was a great spot. Yeah. Cooper, Coppers, what was it? Uh, Coleman's. That's Coleman's, Coleman's, someone's oh, at Bill. It. Yeah, a green we, did a, we did a St. Patty's Day party one year. We rented out a building and it was, oh man, it was fun. It was, it was a good, but we, like the part, the party side of it, like this, I'm going to say the social aspect of it. Syracuse was a really good, Norfolk, don't get me wrong, was unbelievable. You're on the beach. Everybody lived in the same apartment. It was, uh, it was something special that we had, but Syracuse were a little more spread out, but we all lived downtown. We all lived around the bars and the restaurants. And it seemed like every night we were getting together and we were doing something off the ice away from the rink and all the boys touched it at the rink and the atmosphere and the history, obviously yeah, I was slap shot and, and that physicality, but I just remember all the great times we had away from the rink and doing all the, uh, all the team parties that we had and the team social gatherings and I'm gonna have really, really good memories for the rest of my life with this uh, this group of guys for sure. Like, there's and it, it's just so many that you can't just pick one, right? I mean, it's one of those yeah. things. We made sure that we we played hard and but we worked hard, but we also had a lot of fun off the ice. I think that's why we had success. And you know, who was stemmed that was Coop, right? That, that, who, uh, John Cooper would instill that in our group too, with making sure that as a group we got together off the ice we created la liga the bowling right so every second tuesday we we'd get together and we'd have to come up with these 
bowling outfits and bowling costumes. And I'm going <laughs> to let Lobs talk on this one because his team, had, I think, went up over, over and above. I mean, our team, me and Barb's, we came up with uh, Jesus from uh, the Big Lebowski. Nobody, you talk, no, how does he, how did he say it in his little, oh, I can't remember it now. And he can't say it on this anyway, because it's, <laughs> but I want Lobs to tell, I want Lobs to tell. Who had the, hey, who had the jean shorts? Who had the jean shorts? Was that you, Ribs? That might have been uh, Ribs. With, oh, no, with the we had, me and uh, Nighty had like an unreal, but we we're the shockers. The shockers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were wasn't it pink you had pink uh bowling oh, yeah we had costume. bowling suit and everything we invested <laughs> the lab stuff. what was your team our name was uh you can't see us united and uh we, we just went to the what what store was it it was like a hunting gear store and we we bought all the stuff camo and we even bought a tent so when we were waiting, like the next bowler, the three <laughs> next bowlers were sitting in the tent. <laughs> and then, oh, we had so much fun. You can't no, make they that. brought duck calls into the, into the bowling alley. So they're sitting <laughs> in this blind. They had fake ducks, right? The plastic ducks they use for dogs. So they'd, be, they'd get a strike. Some guy would come back. They'd all run into their blind. They'd go, quack, 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 and then throw the duck out. And the guy would come up with a shotgun. Boom, boom, boom. This is in a bowling alley on a Tuesday night in Syracuse. <laughs> this is what we did as a group. People like, you know, the 65 and older crew is down at the other end. And they're looking over like, man, what? what's something? going on here? <laughs> There's a wow. Mexican group. <laughs> that was funny. Wow. That's phenomenal. Well, like well, you said, one, one keeping thing it fun. I, oops, sorry. No, no, one, go ahead. One thing that we can't forget too about uh, our stay in Syracuse is that we always had a good uh, time going uh, down to uh, the mountain of uh, Adirondack for mm -hmm. yeah. uh, team uh, bounding. Lake Placid. Yeah, Lake Placid. That was like those little things. Those, those are just little detail that really makes it a team to, to to regroup and and become a family and these are the moments I won't forget like when me and I know I, I'm not proud of it but me and Eric uh, we were so excited like we weren't we shouldn't be excited I got sent down from Tampa Bay and and uh, me and Eric got together and the next day we we missed the bus <laughs> we had a spa day. We went out to Marabou, Marabou Spa. Yeah, we had a spa yeah, day. Marabou. And then we missed the bus. And then uh, we we didn't know how to get to Lake Placid, so the bus was gone. And Eric and I uh, took off, and we didn't really know where to go. My phone was shut down again, and. Eric, uh, Eric had a flip phone, so we tried to get going uh, the GPS on his flip phone, and uh, <laughs> the black it, was kind of, uh, it was kind of military style uh, GPS. Uh, we had to like <laughs> we had to improvise our way to Lake Placid. It was like, oh my god, what an adventure! Well, let's go back. If we're gonna tell that story, we're gonna tell this. So we wake up and we're late, right? We get a, finally Zets gets a hold of us. Said, "Don't practices at this time. You guys got to be there. Find a way." This is where PC's brain goes. He's like, we're gonna, he's looking to try to hire a helicopter to come pick us up in Syracuse and fly us up to Lake Boston. I'm dead serious. This is a true story. He's like, we gotta get a plane. We're not gonna make it. I'm like, no, no, we can make it. We're gonna drive. So it's a four hour drive, right? So we get in the, and we get in the vehicle and away we go. We get about halfway, GPS dies. So we gotta pull into a convenience store between Syracuse and Lake Placid, New York. And PC and me go into this store in the middle of the woods and we oh, buy one of those old fold out maps right so we're pretty pretty tough pretty tired from the night before so i'm driving like i'm going and labs is in charge we ask for directions the guys say go down and take a left you take a right take another left you get to a big u-turn take flip around 180 degrees see the see the sign right one of those and we're trying to figure out where are we going so labs is running the map i'm, I'm, I'm driving and this is a true story i look over and labs is going like this on, on the map, trying to get the map to zoom because he can't see it on the <laughs> map. At one point, that is a true story. That actually happened. Was, what are you doing, man? He's like, it's too small. I can't see the print. I can't see the print on the map. 
Hey, do you want to do you want to go more in detail? Why did you? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna stop right there. That's it. We're gonna stop. That's. It. We'll save. We'll save the rest of the story for part two. Yeah, part two exactly. Yeah. We made, let's just say we made it to practice on time. We'll just Good. say we, yeah, we made it there. Well, and then as that's he put a, a grill instead of a visor, he gave us like a helmet, like it was a like full cage, too small. <laughs> ah, great start. Well, this this was fun. This was team building. I can't remember if it was the next day we had a team dinner in in Adirondack, and then yeah, rookie dinner. Everybody's everybody's hangover. The next day we jump on the ice, so I'm stretching by the board. And I look like I look beside me, and everybody's kind of like giggling, laughing. So, <laughs> so I look up, and this idiot meter is carrying a whole coffee pot mug or coffee pot, and just <laughs> skating, <laughs> striding all around the ice. <laughs> Isn't that when we did the one guy falls? Everybody fell at the same yeah. time. <laughs> you look. <laughs> <really good. laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, J JT Brown had it on on film too. And you didn't go down, right? You're looking. No. Around. Well, everybody went down, and I'm looking around, and I was like, "Oh shit, I'm late." So then I, I was about five seconds delayed. Brown, uh, Brizzy had it filmed on his thing, and everybody dives, and I'm just still skating around. And then five seconds later, then I come out and dive. <laughs> it was like a five second delay, just like my hockey skills and my hockey sense. <laughs> and I'm wow. probably the one that failed. That's a good one. Um. I know only three of you are here at this point, but uh, obviously there was a, the big, uh, one of the big events that we had was the dome game uh, in the 2014, 15 season. I, what, what was that like uh, to play inside the carrier dome? And uh, uh, that I'm sure the lead up to that was probably pretty intense for all of you. Yeah, it was wicked. It was unreal. It was such a cool experience uh, being inside the dome and uh, all the fans, uh, you know, I think everyone had family come into town for that. And the lead up to it was unreal, the parties and everything that was being set up for it. I knew everyone put a lot of effort into it. Um, yeah, it was it was a cool experience. It was something different. Uh, when we didn't, Neeler's gone, we wanted him to play. But it was a pretty cool experience. So. Eric yeah. did that really cool billboard where he lied on the net. And that was, uh, that was amazing to see in the city. That was the highlight. <laughs> Call for a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus, I think the day before, like the ice was it was brutal, so we weren't even sure if it like how it was going to be, and it ended up being unreal. Like the marketing team did an unreal job to fill it up, and uh, I believe they're talking about uh, something like that for next year, right, Lucas? Yeah, there's some conversations. Uh, maybe not next year. The Crunch are playing outdoors next year against Utica, so I don't know if. Maybe the next couple of years, there's some conversation about doing something like that again. Um, but we'll see where it gets to at that point. But yeah, next year we're we're going outside, so that'll be uh, that's kind of neat. Have, have any of you played any outdoor games uh, at any your points in your careers? Or no, oh, that was the biggest I've I've ever played. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. I yeah, never never had the chance. No, but in Europe they had us one rink that just had a little roof, and then the sides were as open. It was all outside. Oh, yeah. That's so that was an experience. It's different. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. I'm gonna see if we got anything else on Facebook here. I think a lot of the stuff that I remember too is a lot of the pranks that we pulled on each other. Those that was the best part too. Every day going to the ring. I think somebody kept cutting people's underwear and holes in people's underwear. I think Marshy got hit a few times. Oh yeah. And, uh, on the chat so we can sewing learn. sewing guys' arms, the sleeves on guys' arms so they couldn't get their arms out or sewing their pockets, phone in their phones, trying to get their phones out. You know, stuff like that was always something that was hilarious. <laughs> we I still rolled, don't, I rolled hey, five who's the, the Q tip monster. Yeah. Yeah, who's the guy that kept putting the Q used Q tips? I got a few of those Q tips in my stall. I still think it was Mo. I think it was Mo. I know it was. It was Mo and Parody. Parody was the number one. Was it? Yes, parody was one of them. and Chavi, Chavi for sure. It's <laughs> the stupidest thing. <laughs> I'm gonna come back to Syracuse. I'm gonna cut a hole in Brad Travis's underwear. <laughs> uh oh, I, I wonder if he's watching. He'll be on the lookout now uh, if he is. Um, we got I, another question. I rode, I rode a bike, remember, guys, to the rink every day, and then I couldn't <laughs> find it at one time. <laughs> So I'm going, I'm going up the stairs because everything's downstairs. We go up. I'm like, like, where the fuck is my bag? So I, oh, sorry. Where's my bag? So 
<laughs> everybody everybody's kind of giggling laughing so i jump on the ice and they're like saucing pox underneath over my bike and stuff I was bad. who's and did someone put somebody's car on the sh- on the rink too i like that happened yeah. they parked it there i can't remember if that happened there but this right i wouldn't put it past anyone wait it's it, it's oh. going right um, I got a question on Facebook, um, and we'll start to get wrapped up here. We're, we're, uh, we're approaching an hour already. We've, it's been uh, rolling right along. But uh, was, uh, Mike Runner on Facebook wanted to know um, what it's like to see, you know, your, your former teammates, whether it's in Norfolk, Syracuse, wherever, uh, as they continue to, you know, have that success at the NHL level and just to be a, a part of, of uh, their career at one point and to see them continue on to where they are today. I also see all those young guys uh, that found their way and now they uh, like you said they they're not just part of a team they're actually a big piece of the puzzle and and uh, it's as veteran for us it's almost like a, just almost like a little uh, slap on the on the shoulder just like uh, we were there uh, our role was to be leaders and uh, when when you see so many young kids uh, achieving like that it's just uh pride like for, uh, for me at least it's it's awesome to see them uh progressing the way they are yeah and you become good buddies with these guys they're your buddies and you're happy for them right yeah. and it's huge you know still talk to some of the guys so it's awesome you know to see their success i know like these guys see a lot of the guys in montreal and quebec we still hang out together go to fundraisers and stuff together it's huge you know seeing your buddies do well like look at Kneeler's coaching lab's still playing, lighting up, you know, Coates is, you know, moving up and management side. So it's huge, man. See all these guys succeeding, being such a good, good things. Absolutely. It's a small world. It's good to see your buddy do well. No doubt about it. Um, right, before we let you run, I don't know, is anything else anyone wants to mention? Any uh, quick story you want to tell or whatnot before we uh, wrap things up for today? When it's part two. Yeah, I know. I mean, we could have done this. We could keep going for hours at this rate. Yeah, we, should, we. I know there was a thing to get Joe Mormina on here. We should have got that guy on here. Yeah, uh, you get Danny, that guy. Get Danny Tanner on here. Get a nosebleed or something. Danny Tanner. I think well, I'd like to. Sh- I'd like to do a shout out to some people in Syracuse. I think that helped us out. We we talked about us, me and Labs and and Barbs and the guys that kind of got in the community, but. Um, RC at Lucy's up on the hill. It's now the Orange Crate. He was uh he was a big big fan of ours and a friend of the of the crunch and he was very accommodating in his bar and we'd have a lot of our parties up there too and um <clears throat> so just him up on the hill give him a shout out because he was like i said it was we had a lot of team team building um events there that's what we'll leave it at and uh obviously the, the famous mailman in uh Bud. In, he was, Bud. yeah he's here on he, facebook he's he's chirping in there a little bit he's chiming he's, in saying hello and he's the best don't listen, to, don't listen to a word he says don't listen to anything he just sent me some mail last you just sent me mail last week. i made him yeah. sign a waiver i mean and after <laughs> after 10 30 that nothing was ever going to get released about eric nielsen so hopefully he's he's keeping i have it still the copy so uh, he no, hasn't said you anything on retirement bud congrats on retirement yeah. bud yeah, he just happy retirement. That's right. So he, he would be another guy. And then obviously Howard, the owner. Of, I played on a lot, a lot of organizations in the American League, so I'm sure Ribs too, and all the boys can say it, Skip and, and uh, Labs. But to have an owner that involved and be around that much, that cared that much, I think he was a big part of it too. Like his passion and big push, right, yeah. for the renovations and the – relationship with Tampa Bay and I know that's not always easy now that I'm on the other side of it see the kind of the business side but you know he was he was a great owner and he was a great advocate for us to to made everything go smoothly what do you need what what can we do to make this better right so he obviously and and Jim you gotta you gotta give Jim uh Jim a a tip to the hat too because he was he was big big time for us helping to make sure that transition from us from Norfolk Syracuse was was good so just want to give a shout out to those if they're listening. Yeah, those people. And, uh, Vince to the group as well. And Mark too. Mark, I would be know. sexy beauty. T- all of them. Yeah, <laughs> you go around the whole. You can do it Mitch all. Mitch bald head. Powell too. Where's Mark Powell? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mark, the best posture in the league. Mark, there's just a lot of good people. 
Yeah, he, helped, he helped me out a lot, Big Mark. I miss that guy. Eric Nielsen, what are you drinking there? Oh, that's the alkaline water, my friend. Eh? 9.5 pH, pure hydration. As- <laughs> We'll save that for part two, guys. That's my plug right there. That's <laughs> excellent. That's Skip, Skip laughs now, but he's gonna be his ice machines are gonna have it here in uh, about a month or two when this thing gets you all over. It, buddy. I'll I'll ship it out to you, bud. Nine point five <laughs> alkaline ice cubes. You imagine? Oh, geez, we're gonna take it over, buddy. I love it. <laughs> That's it. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, appreciate the time here. Uh, there are some people on Facebook calling for reunion. So uh, we'll see if we can get everyone together again. Uh, Daniel Walcott is chiming in as well, saying the same thing. He wants a reunion. We should get him so, on there, too. Yeah, well, he'd be he'd be great to have on there. So I, I'm sure yeah. we got a lot of time on our hands these days. I'm sure we'll have a, maybe another opportunity to get some or all of you back on a, at some other point. But thanks for carving out an hour today. We appreciate it. I know uh, the fans, I think, really enjoyed this as well. So thanks, guys. Thanks so much. No thanks, problem. Luke. Thanks, Lucas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks to everyone who uh, joined us here today on our uh, crunch chat. Big uh, thanks to uh, those, uh, those four guys, JP Cote, Eric Nielsen, Mike Angelides, and PC Labrie. A lot of fun. Uh, I like, like we said, you could have done that for uh, for hours on end, but uh, we had to let them run after an hour. So, uh, big thanks to them. Um, you'll be able to catch all of this again at some other point as well, um, whether right here on Facebook or we'll have it on the YouTube and whatnot. But uh, that was a lot of fun. A lot going on again with the crunch. Um, uh, if you haven't already entered into the raffle for that very first released. Um, St. Patrick's Day jersey that is still going on so just uh, check out uh, the crunch on the team store there you can uh, get some raffle tickets to potentially get uh, that Ross Colton St. Patrick's Day crunch jersey one of a kind there so uh, that's going on that's uh, the drawing will be I think uh, Monday or something coming up for the next couple days at least so have a few more days to enter in for that and be the first one to claim the St. Patrick's Day jersey otherwise I'm sure we'll be back with another one of these uh, next week guests to be announced but could be a tough act to follow uh, after this one here this week. Thanks so much, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll chat again next time. Have a great day, everybody.